So how do I think about planning uh, for a vision? You know, something, uh, you know, you got all these to-do items, all these possible things you could do, but you have a particular vision. How do you essentially, I guess, maybe prioritize and, and choose sequencing of, of those tasks that lead to the vision? And a specific example we can talk about is creating a business plan. Okay, so the way I think about it is, first of all, I think whatever vision you have that you'd like to manifest, achieve, um, needs to have a strategic framework that you feel confident about. Um, so, for example, uh, you know, in, when we're talking about a business plan, uh, as an example, like, like you need to have a strategic framework of a business plan that you believe in. Now, I, I happen to have an, a master's in business administration. I feel like it taught me very little about entrepreneurship and actually how to make a business plan that works these days. <laughs> I have a fellow MBA buddy, Steve here, <laughs> maybe can, uh, can relate to that. But, um, but yeah, I, I had to come up with that. I had to come up with that shit, you know, on my own, like a lot of trial and effort didn't come from the corporate business, business training. You know what I mean? So, uh, so for example, like, like a corporate business plan, you know, the, which gives me no confidence. It's like, come up with a financial, you know, you know projection, you know, have a um, HR plan and have a, uh, you know, marketing plan, marketing plan, I, I, I agree with even, but the marketing plans they usually have, you know, price, product, blah, blah, it's like BS. There's a lot, a lot of BS in a typical business plan training for solopreneurs, at least, I'll just say there. It's like a lot of the business plan trainings are for like bigger companies and they're very kind of like stodgy and outdated in my opinion. So uh, I came up with my own strategic framework for a business plan that um, obviously I have high confidence in because it came out of my own experience and I call it the eight practices of authentic business. And I have a blog post on it. Of course I do. And uh, which I'll share with you in, in below. And if you um, want more, based on that there is an entire course on business plan you know creating an authentic business plan um, but i'm going to share the share the blog post below so the eight practices uh, you know i'm just for the sake of time i'm not going to like detail all of them because you can read the blog post and watch the video but it's it's things like do you have a foundation of joyful productivity meaning are you implementing the things from joyful productivity such as having a start of day routine, having an end of day routine, having uh, enough time to process your inbox and your to-do list. Are you doing capture, categorize calendar? You know, things from the Joyful Productivity suite of tools, suite of skills, if you have them, to me, that's the foundation. And then there's things like um, content creation and content distribution, which are highly important for building an audience, which makes business and marketing easier and easier over time. There's also things like market research, uh, or you know, offer alignment. There's things like um, net caring, which is connecting with your colleagues and your clients, so that they might refer you more people. Um, and you know, so there's things like that in the eight practices that gives me tremendous confidence that if I just do these eight practices, uh, I know my business gets not just no. I've seen it over years now. It's like okay, it's just like <laughs> it's just like this. You know, it's like if I just do the eight practices, business just gets easier over the years. I mean, right now, for example, I'm talking to you all, I'm recording this as part of the TLC program for 2022. And last year's TLC launch, um, you know, took more work than this year's TLC launch. This year's TLC launch was easier. And there are more people who signed up this year than last year. Uh, even though this year's program was double the amount of money, the, I doubled the price this year. I mean, it's because it's double the amount of time. It's one year instead of six months. So, so this is the, an example of how business gets easier. The more we do the eight practices or whatever strategic framework you have confidence in. Because if you don't have confidence in the framework for your vision, you'll just, there'll be that subconscious doubt, like, ah, I'm not sure this is right. You know what I mean? You, you won't really do it. So you have to have confidence in whatever framework. So, so whether it's, building a business or building a house, right? If you're building a house, you have to have a strategic framework for it. Like first, you got to have 
make sure the, the fountain, you know, the wooden foundation or the brick foundation is really solid. And then you pour the, I don't know how to build a house, but <laughs> you got to lay the wire. Like you have to put things like that, like the foundation has to be uh, the, the, the framework of what goes into making a house has to be clear for you. And then that you have to have the sequence. So the eight practices is, is, a, is if there's a reason why they're listed in that, as the eight practices. There's a sequence to it as well. So um, then once you have a strategic framework and a sequence of, okay, generally to build a business, you need to have a content you know, practice and then you need to have market research uh, you know, you know, practice essentially. You need to have a rhythm of gentle launches. That's part of the eight practices too. Like, okay, now that I know I need these things, these are categories of tasks. Or you might say these are groupings of things you do. Like when I say content creation, if I just told you that, you'd be like, well, what do you really mean by that? Do, do you mean write an article a week? Do you mean make two videos? What do you mean by that? And so within each of the, of the framework pieces is its own way of completing it. I mean, some people, content creation might say, all I can do is one article a week, George. That's all I can do. And some people are like, no, I'm going to do make a video a day, three-minute video every day. Great but you, you accomplish each framework piece. Just like when you're building a house, do you want the foundation? I don't know, now, now I'm going to out of my league, but it's like building a house, you want the foundation, do you want the wiring to include, you know, smart home wiring or not? You know, you need wiring in your home, but it's up to you how you want to do it. You know, do I, so you've got the vision. First of all, does the vision inspire you? Okay, and number two, do you have the strategic framework that you're confident in? How, how do you get the strategic framework? You either, uh, you know, you take a course, you read a blog post, you talk it to your mentors and your friends and colleagues on how they got there, how they got to, or how they are confidently getting to where they want. And you, you kind of borrow and create your own strategic framework. I tell people all the time, even if I give you the eight practices, I still want you to mold them to your own, you know, style and your own confidence. So. So you, you, you have the vision that excites you, you have the strategic framework that, that, that you're confident in, that's borrowed from all your learnings and your connections and your conversations. And then you organize your daily tasks. And, and now you're able to say, okay, I have these hundred tasks, right? Let me go through those hundred tasks. And so let me categorize the ones that match my framework. Okay, task number two and seven match the content creation category. Let me put that in the category. Task number three and four, I don't even know where that fits. And maybe it doesn't fit. Maybe you should eliminate it. You see, once you have the framework, then you can start eliminating things. You go, yeah, maybe, or postpone. If you don't want to eliminate it, because I say, well, this, these three or eight or <laughs> 80 tasks can go into someday, maybe, meaning like I may or may not do it. I'm not going to delete them because I might regret that but I can at least remove the due date and like just set it aside and not let it pop up all the time in my face, right? I only want the things that pop up that are actually time sensitive that fit my strategic framework. So I hope this helps and yeah, we'll continue the conversation yeah. about that. Thank yeah. you, George. Um, actually, yeah. I am an architect. So that, there you go. that, <laughs> <laughs> that example of uh, building a house was a very good uh, way of bridging uh, my thought processes with this. So. Yeah, this so is God. very, very helpful. Thank you very much. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for asking.